Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. In today's video, what you see is a very large Mangalitsa ham. And what I want to show you is, just because he's large don't mean there's a lot of meat here. Mostly fat. That is the thing about a Mangalitsa. It's not for everyone. We're going to try to cure this. I've never cured a Mangalitsa ham. They are extremely, extremely fatty, and I think it's going to take a long time to get it cured. But what I'm going to do is show you how to go about it. And I know for a fact, right off the bat, we've got to cut these bones out, get the ball joint out, trim it up and get it all sort of uniform. And then we can get it in the salt. So let's do it. Okay, we've got it trimmed up. You can see right here the ball joint. If I can show you the ball joint right there. I sunk my knife along that bone as deep as I could get it from both directions to get up in that hock, get down along that bone. This is a pretty good sized ham and I don't want it to go bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack the salt into those areas right now. I've got it in this pan so we don't lose any. But I'm probably gonna leave it in this pan through the curing process and just set this down into my ice chest because I've got bacon in there that I need to access here in a couple days. And I don't want to disturb this ham by knocking all the salt off of it. I'll just be able to pick this straight up out of there. So I just get more salt and I'm just gonna fill this cavity that I created with my knife completely full. We're supposed to have a lot warmer weather coming up here. We've had it down. We started, obviously, everybody knows. We started the whole south, southern, southeast, mid range of the US was in extremely cold temperatures for the first while. And now it's gonna warm up a little bit. So we don't want this going bad. Even if it was gonna be cold, I would salt it the same because these hams are gonna see a wide variety of weather conditions and you've got to have it ready to go. So I'm just gonna keep packing it. Once I get it packed, I'm gonna completely cover it and submerge it. I'm gonna turn it over right now and go ahead and get this backside massaged in so that once I turn it back over, I don't have to flip it again. And this is immensely, immensely thick fat. I'm just gonna spread this salt so that it's laying in a nice bed. I don't have to go like this. And now I'm gonna come back from this direction and fill this. I had a buddy in Texas that had some wild hog hams go bad and we could never figure out why. <laughs> he thinks maybe he had a bad batch of salt and I can't argue with it because I don't know. I've never known for a bad batch of salt to be in existence really, but I mean, it's possible, anything's possible. But we're gonna do this one. This is Mangalitsa. This is my first Mangalitsa ham to do. And I can't only really talk because my mouth is watering like you wouldn't believe just thinking about it but i've got to calm down because i've got a quite a few days to wait before i can try this now i've got it packed inside i've got it rubbed outside at this point i think it's time to lay it on it i'm just going to pour it all in here every bit of this And I wish I had more, to be honest with you, but this is the last. I'm gonna have to run to the co-op and get some more if they've got some. Now, I'm just gonna pull it down in here, pack it against that. We want it submerged in every way. That's one reason I wanted to use this pan. It's got a smaller capacity and that 
will make the salt go further. We've got it salted. I am going to pop it in here real quick, and we will see you in about 10 days. I'm going to let this thing salt for 10 days or thereabouts, and we'll smoke that baby. All right, folks, I'm going to pull this out of the salt today. Good old Mangalitsa hog ham. It's big, and I don't want to take a chance of it going bad. So I left it in a little longer than normal, or at least longer than what I normally do. I left it in the salt roughly 11 days. Now what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and wash it off, pat it dry, and hang it in the smokehouse. And we're gonna get some smoke rolling on this baby. Look at that. We've got that good dark coloration. Feels quite firm. The fat's still quite soft. I like it. All right, I'm gonna wash it off real quick and we'll take this gentleman to the smokehouse. All right, we made it to the smokehouse. I just happen to have room in here for this ham. I'm gonna hang it first by the hawk, just like this for a day smoking it. And tomorrow, I believe I'm going to turn it over and smoke it the rest of the time like this right here so that this hawk can drain while it's smoking. I was at the grocery store yesterday and I happened to notice a rack of country hams really comparable to this size, basically this size right here. What would you think that a country ham this size cost? Over $70 unbelievable absolutely crazy and there we have it a big old country ham hanging there this is the first mangalitsa ham we've done as you can see we've got bacon here all dried down nice i'm just gonna leave it in there and let the smoke roll on that baby i love smoking meat all right, as you can see, we've got some smoke rolling out of the smokehouse. I've got the door open until the fire gets caught good enough. I've got my wheelbarrow sitting over top of the wood because it's supposed to rain today. And I've got this still standing here. <laughs> now, it's spreading pretty nice. Sometimes so she is spreading out. But she's hanging up in there a little bit. I believe that that poplar tree right there is going to help guide it because the tree, the limbs are around it it's going to just ease on down and it's just moving inches each day maybe not even that much so it's definitely a situation that some people could not stand to tolerate could not tolerate to leave but i'm interested to see what's going to happen it's too interesting not to just allow it to do what it wants to do All right, we have smoked this ham for three days and I kept the smoke a rolling beautiful on it. As you can see right here, I did turn it over so that the hawk could drain out the other way. Now I am going to take it off and get these hooks out of it. This is a heavy ham. This is not just a light little old eggy poo. This guy was 382 pounds, so heavy enough. So, I want you to look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that salt coming out of the inside of it. That's gonna be a wrap on this video. I've gotta take this in the house and cut it off the bone. My daughter's wanting to make a special Italian bread called focaccia. 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 <laughs> We're gonna be making a video on putting this ham in this bread some kind of a special thing. I've never seen it, never eaten it. 
But that's where we're headed. I'm gonna get in there and get to that. And that's what you're gonna see tomorrow on tomorrow's video. A ham that's worth basically 70 bucks made into some Italian bread. And not all of it. We're probably gonna have a video about how to make some canned ham as well. But for now, that's all we've got for you. Hope you have a great day and I hope you can make yourself a ham. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you.